What's important too is if, if people have ever talked to a Muslim, um, and a lot of people haven't, unfortunately, but I encourage people to find some Muslims and befriend them because a lot of the ones I've engaged with around the country are, are some nice people and they like to have these conversations. And of course, they have a, a misunderstanding of so much when it comes to Jesus, the gospels, mm -hmm. et cetera, and Christianity. They think we're tritheistic and because we believe in three gods, supposedly, which is false. And, and so a lot of people can get intimidated. But the reality is there's a lot of level ground that we can have with Muslims from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And I bring this up, Greg, because it's important to point out that progressives, it's the same. Most of them that say they're a Christian, they believe Jesus is their savior, but deny, again, like we talked about, they deny his virgin birth. They deny that he's a son of God. They deny that he, he died on the cross for sins and rose again, that he's coming Miracles. again, etc. But what, what they do is, like you said, they want to embrace a form of Jesus and a form of Christianity. They do want to turn to the scriptures and say, we don't take the Bible literally, but we take the Bible seriously. They say that mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I use it to my advantage then. And just like I do with a Muslim, when I say, hey, I believe in the Injils, which is the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so do Muslims, but the Muslims have never read it. So this is a great opportunity for me to say, look, I take um, the, 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 the approach that I believe that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote about Jesus in the first century. Mm -hmm. And this is what they said about him. And I affirm his divinity all the way to his second coming. And when I've talked to progressive Christians, I interviewed a lot of them, actually. They didn't want to be in the book. And so they knew that I was just, we were just doing this behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But I had, and some of them were progressive pastors leading churches. Some of them have written books. And they're very nice. Uh, we, we got in some heated debates, but we were both respectful on both sides. So I, I thank them for that. And they're very helpful. But when it came down to this, what, what it, you're right. It's like, you guys, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that I do affirm that Jesus had 12 disciples and they're even named. You can't, you can't hold some things to be historically true to lend some form of credibility so that you can have some spiritual emphasis that you can use in your belief system as a progressive Christian. Mm -hmm. And then yet, and this is what the Jesus seminar does, and then yet deny, right, mm -hmm. everything else. Right. But that, that's a cherry picking type of a person, right? They, they, they're only taking notice to things that have little significance overall, because at the mm -hmm. heart of it is, remember, progressive Christians are either a deist or they're a pantheist. Mm -hmm. So God either way is not transcendent and imminent into creation the way that we mm -hmm. as biblical Christians teach. Right. So that is so important. This is why I talk about process theism in the book as well, Greg, right. because that is what we actually, before we look at the biblical hermeneutic, before we look at historical grammatical inter interpretation of scripture, understand where most progressive Christians are coming from with their view of God.